Photoshop quick tips, contrast, old school style. Hey folks, welcome back to the channel. I'm David Bird with Reality Reimagine. I'm an award-winning photographer and Photoshop artist that specializes in fantasy composite art. And today we're gonna to have a Photoshop quick tip video where we're going to cover how to create contrast in an image. And we're gonna do it by visiting the old school methods and the ways we used to do things long ago in the Photoshops before the digital age of adjustment layers and third party programs and AI technology. This is turning into some kind of like Clint Eastwood get off my lawn. You kids nowadays with your third party programs and your presets and your light rooms, we had to do it with two tin cans and a string. Anyway, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna look at how to create contrast under its basic dynamics of adding highlight and shadow to an image. And then I'm gonna show you how in the modern version of Photoshop, there's an easier way to do this than the way that I'm going to initially show you. But then I'm going to explain to you why the old school way still rocks it instead of the new way, because old school is still good and I still have value. To get us started, this is my wonderful friend, Kiara. You've seen her in several videos here on the channel. If you'd like to see more of her amazing artwork, visit the Instagram account at the link below. This is an image that we captured a while ago. It's been retouched, but there's no color grading, no artistic enhancement that's been added to it. And I want to start by adding some contrast to this scene. Now, what is contrast? Ultimately, it's the travel that we do between highlight and shadow. That contrast, the variance between highlight and shadow, that's the term contrast itself. Contrast can apply to luminosity values or light values in the image. And we can also see contrast in the color values as well. So. To create contrast, there's many different ways to do it. And even way back when, when I started with Photoshop 4, there were a few different ways to create contrast. But the way that I initially learned how to do it was to use the information in the image itself and to use layer blending modes to be able to create the contrast. It was the way that I loved to do it because I had the control of the two different layers that I would create in the layer stacks to do it. And I could fluctuate with the opacities and so forth to get the desired results that I was looking for. So let me demonstrate that to you and then we'll move on from there. So we have just our main background layer here. I'm going to duplicate this layer two times by hitting control or command and the letter J. Now I have my two copies and for purposes of the video, I'm going to relabel the topmost layer as highlights. And then the second layer will relabel this one as shadows. So to get the contrast look and use the information in the image itself to do it, I'm simply going to change the blending mode of the layer that is called highlights. This one's gonna be changed to screen, which makes everything brighter as you can see. Now I'm gonna to come to the middle layer and change the blending mode of this one to soft light, which uses the information in the image to make things a little bit more contrasted and dark or potentially brighter. Now I've explained how the blending modes, the layer blending modes themselves, I've explained how they work and the science behind it and so forth in a previous video on the channel. So if you're new to the channel, welcome. Take a look at the card above. It will take you to the retouching series when you're done with this video and you can find all of that science nerdy Photoshop stuff there. But Screen blending mode just makes everything brighter and that's all we really need to know. For soft light, soft light is going to use colors in the scene and any color that it sees that is brighter than 50% gray, it will make everything brighter. Any colors that it sees in the scene that is darker than 50% gray, it will make everything darker. So in a way we're using color to create that contrast and the blending mode of screen, we're just using the data to make everything brighter. These two in conjunction, create contrast because we're traveling between highlight and shadow. So let's look at the image, the original image as it was, and then afterward with the two layers, the two duplicates on those two different blending modes. And keep in mind the blending mode of screen and soft light is letting us see through all of the layers. It isn't necessarily blocking anything. So for instance, this topmost layer isn't blocking these two. Because of this effect, we see things brighter. We're able to see the contrast values of the layer in between called shadows. And then we still see the original layer of background because the blending mode of overlay and soft light and the blending mode of screen allows you to see down and through to the other layers themselves. Now, for purposes of this video, for a compare and contrast here in a moment, I'm going to make a composite layer of everything by hitting Control, Alt, Shift, and E for everything at the top of the layer stack itself. Then I'm gonna put the two new duplicates that we made 
into a little group and turn off that group. So essentially I have one layer that is now solidified. There's no blending mode up here on this layer. It's on a blending mode of normal. It's blocking the view of the background layer. So if I turn off this layer, we see the original. If I turn it on, it's there. I'm explaining this because I want to show you how Photoshop has evolved and has created things like adjustment layers. And again, adjustment layers I've talked about in the retouching series. So if you're new to digital photo editing and want to learn more about Photoshop, really look at that retouching series. It's a great place to start. So down here in the adjustment layers window, we have an adjustment layer called brightness and contrast. So if I make the brightness and contrast adjustment layer, I'm putting it in the layer stack below our little composite layer that we made because that composite layer really is the representation of the old school way of doing those two duplicate layers and blending modes and stuff. So I'm turning that off. Now we have our brightness and contrast. If I start increasing the brightness in it, we can see all that beautiful data and so forth coming in. Let's go up to like 65. Let's increase the contrast, which is both affecting the luminosity values or the light values. It's also affecting the color and giving us some contrast in those travels of color. So with one adjustment layer, we're getting that level of control where we can control highlight and shadow and get the contrast in between. And if we compare and contrast with this topmost layer, I'm going to turn it on. So this view right now that you see is with the adjustment layer of brightness and contrast. If I turn on the layer that we made before, there's very little difference as I bounce back and forth. They're pretty much the same, right? So again, with this one composite layer, we can see everything is roughly the same. With the brightness and contrast adjustment layer, of course, we can move these sliders and adjust things just as we had done before, where if we want certain looks to change in how we made those two separate layers, like if the highlights are too strong, I can just pull the opacity down a little bit. I can pull the opacity or fill down of the shadow layer and get a different feeling to this contrast that I'm trying to create within my artwork. That's how we would finesse it in the old school way. How we finesse it now is using a brightness and contrast adjustment layer, a curves adjustment layer, using Adobe Camera. The list is endless in contrast. But here's why I still use this old school method of creating contrast. If I want to be able to use this adjustment layer and let certain parts of the original values of light and shadow in the original image come through, I need to do a process called blend if again, I've covered blend if in the retouching series. So please take a look at that series if you're new to Photoshop, but let's go into the dialogue of blend if by double clicking the layer, the brightness and contrast adjustment layer where there's not a word or a mask or a thumbnail that pulls up the layer style dialogue. And then here is our blend if so that I can tell Photoshop, I want the underlying layer, which is this original layer. I want some of those values to come up and through the piece potentially for whatever reason. So if I split this triangle by holding the alter option key, I can feather the effect and let some of the original data travel through. I can let some of the original highlights travel through and that provides another layer or option of the artwork and how you can control it and finesse it to get that very fine tuned stylized look. Here's the problem with this. The way blend if works on adjustment layers, I don't know the science behind this, so don't quote me on this from a Mr. Wizard kind of perspective, but it doesn't work nearly as well as it does with an actual layer itself using again, the color data that's there. It's using an effect, an algorithm for this brightness and contrast adjustment layer and numbers and trying to adjust all of that with the blend if property. But here, if we were to do the same thing with this composite layer that we made that has the effect of the contrast that we're seeking in this scene, we get a different result. So I'm going to again, double click anywhere where there's not a word or a thumbnail that brings up the layer style window. I'm going to come down to here and say, I want the underlying layer, which is the original background layer. I want some of that data to come through to feather the effect, hold alter option and split the triangle. As I start to split it, it's a more smooth transition. The tones are smoother. Now, let me preface up front for anybody who decides to drive by in the comments. Are we seeing a major radical difference? No, we are not good for you. There is a subtle difference here. And that subtlety is key in Photoshop. I say this all the time in the videos that subtlety is key inside of Photoshop. You get such finesse and control 
because you're using a layer that has actual data in it. And what's interesting is it has actual data that is identical to the data at the base, but we altered the highlight and shadow. We altered the contrast values as we travel between highlight and shadow. So if we want some of the original contrast values from the original image to come into play in certain areas of the image in the scene, we can do that by using blend if because we're using the original data of all the image itself by using old school methodology of creating contrast. So I encourage you to try this, to, to I, wh whatever your favorite way of adding contrast into a scene in Photoshop or into an image, that's totally fine. But I highly encourage you to go through the simple process, duplicate the layer two times, Take one of them and change the blending mode to screen and change the blending mode of the second one to soft light. And then just work with the opacity. You can condense that down into one layer and then again work with BlendEv to get some unique results to it. That's the quick tip. Let's have some final thoughts and finish out this tutorial for today. Final thoughts are totally going to make me sound like an old man and I'm 43 and we just had a baby and yes, I'm feeling my age in several different ways, but this is a universal truth that I've seen throughout my entire adult life. Old school never dies because things that are new are built on those older systems. All of the new ideas are always predicated on older ideas. And yes, new ideas creates new ways of doing things, new efficiency, new art forms are possible by new tools and so forth. I'm not saying to abandon all the new stuff that comes into every iteration of Photoshop, but it's important to learn how some of these things worked in the past because you are providing yourself the opportunity to be able to get a different result that could be better than the algorithms and the automations that we are seeing Photoshop become. Yes, Photoshop, uh, layer blending modes of screen and soft light, that's an algorithm, that's, that's data, that's software that's working together. But I think it's fair to argue that as we see new iterations of Photoshop come into play, AI is stepping in more and more and more. It's stepping in to try to decipher what it thinks you're looking for as the human. Don't lose sight of your human ability to be able to create the art yourself. Because in my opinion, until Skynet exists, which it kind of does right now in Photoshop with Adobe Sensei, but anyway, that's another thing. Your human mind will be able to create artwork that is far superior than what any kind of algorithm or artificial intelligence can do in the year 2021. And now you just learned an old school way of doing something that I'm excited for you to experiment with and try because it's a lot of fun to be able to go back to some of these ways where we were learning how to use Photoshop to all of its strengths and abilities when AI didn't exist, when several different menus and tools and options in Photoshop didn't exist. You had to learn how to push the program as far as it could go and you got wonderful results as an artist. That's the end of this video today. If you like the content of the video, please make sure to give the video itself a like and consider subscribing to the channel because new content debuts each week in photography and Photoshop education. And when you subscribe, make sure to hit the bell icon to be notified of that new content when you return to the YouTubes. Thanks for watching today. And until next time, I'll see you out there in the world of Photoshop.